Let's talk about nutrition. The idea of nutrition is very simple. If we take a food, the idea of intaking the food is that that food would provide certain energy to the body. This energy would be in the form of nutrients that our body would get. And this is what this nutrition is all about. So the food is any substance that provide nutrient to the body. Now the food is required for energy, for growth, for maintenance, repair as a raw material for the body and also for protection of the body. We can classify the food into three types. One is the energy giving food this food is in the form of carbohydrates or fats the other is bodybuilding food which is in the form of proteins the last one is the protective or the regulative food which is in the form of vitamins and minerals coming on to the very first which is carbohydrates this carbohydrate could be classified as monosaccharide which have just one molecule disaccharide which have two trisaccharide which have three and polysaccharide which have many of those monosaccharides are the simplest form of sugar carbohydrate is composed of carbon hydrogen and oxygen uh, as the elements the formula for monosaccharides is C6H12O6 the formula for di and tri uh, for disaccharides is C12H22 and O11 for polysaccharides it is C6H10O5 whole n n is the number of molecules which are present examples of monosaccharide are glucose fructose and galactose the simplest form of sugar easily absorbed by the body glucose is what is known as grape sugar it is the simplest form of the sugar. It indicates the level of glucose in the blood. It is called as fuel of the cell. So 100 milligram of fuel, 100 milligram of glucose per 100 milligram of blood is what is present in the blood. If it is extra, it is converted into glycogen and it is stored in the liver and the muscles. The next is fructose. As the name suggests, it is called as fruit sugar. It is found in ripe fruits and honey. The last one is galactose. Galactose is because of the splitting of lactose and this is also called as brain sugar. The names are important. The next is disaccharides. Disaccharides have two molecules. Sucrose is a disaccharide which have two molecules uh, and these two molecules are glucose plus fructose. Sucrose is also known as cane sugar. The next is lactose. Lactose is also known as milk sugar. It has glucose plus galactose. The next is maltose. It is also called as malt sugar. It has two molecules of glucose and glucose together. The next is polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, three important polysaccharides that we talk about are starch, glycogen and cellulose. Starch is the one which is found in maize, rice, barley, potato. It is tasteless, white and powdery and it gives a blue black color with iodine. This is very important. Glycogen gives a red color with iodine. Cellulose gives no color with iodine. Extremely important. A very important question that you must know. Glycogen is stored in liver, in muscle. Extra glucose gets converted into glycogen, stored into liver and muscles. Cellulose is found in the fibrous cell walls, the stalk of the, um, the stalk, the stem, the woody part of the tree. And this is uh, mainly seen, the good examples could be cotton, jute, linen as good examples for uh, cellulose. Now cellulose is again an important roughage. It prevents constipation, it is fibrous uh, and it also helps to keep the gut clean. Cellulose is an important component of diet for uh, the ruminants which is the grass eating animals. The next is understanding fats and proteins in the diet. Now fats are again made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen similar to the hydro uh, carbohydrates but they produce more energy. Fats produce more energy in contrast to carbohydrates. Uh, one, mol mo one molecule of fat can actually release 9.45 kilocalories in contrast to one molecule of carbohydrate which can release only 4.2 kilocalories. So fat has a capability to release higher amount of energy in contrast to a carbohydrate. Fat provides a fatty layer which is in the form of adipose. It protects the internal organs. It also helps the body as cushioning agent and also uh, prevents uh, the body from extreme cold uh, so prevents uh, is actually protecting the body from heat loss as simple as that the next is protein 
protein are body building uh, food so they actually comprise of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur phosphorus nitrogen is among these the most essential amino acids are considered as the building blocks so a chain of amino acid combined to form dipep uh, peptides and then they would form polypeptides and finally the protein that would be synthesized so amino acid is the basis for the formation of protein molecule now food which is rich in protein pulses any kind of pulses have rich in protein are rich in protein sprouted uh, fruits uh, sprouted cereals are again rich in protein uh, milk formulations of milk in the form of uh, curd yogurt paneer cheese are also rich in protein they provide uh, material for growth maintenance repair help in muscle contraction considered as ultimate form of energy and the deficiency of protein uh, could lead to diseases like marasmus koshyakar which is again a protein energy malnutrition disease uh, from all these three carbohydrate fat and protein so far that we have studied we get calories calories is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of 1000 gram of water by 1 degree celsius so protein gives us 4.1 kilo calories carbohydrate 4.2 fats 9.45 these values are important for your uh, one line question multiple choice questions and what is calorie to the energy required to raise the temperature of 1000 grams of water by 1 degree celsius the next is vitamins and minerals they are considered as protective and regulative uh, food so under vitamins we understand water soluble and fat soluble water soluble are vitamin b and c uh, fat soluble are a d e k Let's talk about each of these one by one. Vitamin A is required for healthy vision, skin, bone, teeth. Uh, the sources of each of those have been mentioned here. I won't speak that out, but the idea is to have a clear understanding. There could be a direct question based on this. Now, one very important question: deficiency of vitamin A could lead to night blindness. However, excess of vitamin a could also lead to disorders this could be in the form of nausea headache drowsiness peeling off the oral skin and swelling of the long bones in the body the next is vitamin b1 which is thiamine it is also known as antineutric the deficiency causes beriberi disease so beriberi is the syndrome it leads to loss of appetite and cessation of growth b2 is riboflavin riboflavin the deficiency of that leads to chilosis that is inflammation and the cracking of the inner surface of the mouth uh, itching and the burning of the eyes and then the sores on the tongue are seen because of the deficiency of b2 riboflavin the next is b3 niacin uh, b b4 niacin and uh, niacin is important because uh, the deficiency of it leads to pellagra uh, b6 is pyro pyridoxin b7 is biotin b9 is foliate b12 uh, the deficiency of it leads to pernicious anemia b9 folate deficiency lead to convulsions in children uh, then scurvy is a disease which is because of deficiency of vitamin c deficiency of vitamin d leads to osteomalacia in adults rickets in children vitamin e is considered as a sterility uh, anti sterility vitamin it is also known as tocopherol and uh, the deficiency can cause destruction of red blood cells vitamin k is important for blood clotting and has an important role in clotting of the blood so these are some of the important vitamins important to note vitamin b and c if taken in excess could be released through urea however vitamin a d e k gets accumulated in the body hyper uh, or more amount of vitamins uh, which are fat soluble if accumulated in the body leads to a condition which is known as hypervitaminosis so hypervitaminosis as the name suggests hyper means more so more amount of vitamin present in the body the next is minerals among the minerals we do have some major minerals and minor minerals those are called as macronutrients and micronutrients under macronutrients calcium sodium potassium are some of the major ones under minor iron and iodine are some of the important ones now minerals vitamins are organic 
minerals are inorganic again important to note minerals uh, sodium is used to maintain the water level the salt balance transmission of the nerve impulse contraction of the muscle and reproduction calcium is required for healthy bone uh, then we have potassium which is uh, again to maintain the sodium potassium channel so nerve transmission nerve balance muscle contraction and reproduction the same function as uh, sodium has so the sodium and the potassium have the similar function then we have phosphorus the role of phosphorus is very important phosphorus helps in the metabolism of fat teeth formation bone formation so healthy bones healthy teeth through proper intake of phosphorus also formation of atp to adp we understood atp is the fuel uh, or the energy of the cell now atp to adp conversion takes place and then adp to atp cycle that occurs the the chapter where we focused on glycolysis and krebs cycle and then we understood the formation the release of 2 atp in the case of glycolysis 38 atp in the case of uh, krebs cycle glycolysis is an in a anaerobic process krebs cycle is an aerobic process and through the energy which is released it is stored in the form of atp this atp gets converted into adp and and in that process phosphorus is having a very important role to play the deficiency of phosphorus leads to softening of the bone so again uh, for bone disorders phosphorus is one of the main components that is given iron is a micronutrient the deficiency leads to lack or uh, deficiency of hemoglobin a uh, deficiency of myoglobin and reduced enzyme activities iodine is again uh, present in trace amount in salt it is added artificially so deficiency of iodine leads to cretinism uh, poor mental and physical retarded growth we could say now the amount of calories that an individual require is again very very important we say somewhere from 1600 to 3500 cal kilo calories per day is the basic requirement and this should have a encompassment of uh, carbohydrate fat protein minerals and vitamins and then only it would be called as a balanced diet if only one of them is taken then it is not considered as a balanced diet now in rural area the calorie intake is somewhere around 2400 in urban area it is 2100 for children above 6 years the intake is around 1100 kilo calories the, these figures appear to be monotonous but they are extremely important for your objective type of questions uh, the diet on an average must have at least 90 grams of protein uh, 90 grams of fat and 450 grams of carbohydrate the next is the deficiency diseases because of protein and energy Uh, malnutrition so it is koshyokar and marasmus now marasmus as you can see is a condition which is due to deficiency of protein carbohydrate and fats normal hair a uh, thin lean personality it is also called as odd man or wisp appearance with thin limb and little muscle with weight underweight of the body structure the person gets highly susceptible to various diseases and this happens in the absence of mother's milk being given to the child uh, if mother's milk is not been able to give then cow milk is a good substitute then we have koshyokar koshyokar occurs in children in the age group of 1 to 3 years where due to malnutrition of the mother the mother's milk is not given to the child uh, in this case swelling of the legs or edema of the legs takes place moon face with uh, little interest in the surroundings is seen flaky appearance swollen abdomen thin muscles but fat layer being present is seen the major reason is the person gets excessive uh, carbohydrate but lacks the amount of protein that is required by the body this uh, if seen in severe condition a child may turn out to be fatal before the age of 5 years stunted uh, growth bulging eyes are another common characteristics of koshyokar the difference between koshyokar and marasmus is a very important uh, difference malnutrition and undernutrition two important terms that you must be familiar with malnutrition is indicative of poor intelligence retarded mental and physical growth poor muscle development low working capa capability undernutrition is a less extreme form of malnutrition where weakening of the body weakening of the muscle activity takes place and uh, the the fat layer or the the fats uh, fat deposition is reduced so under nutrition when uh, exposed to further 
if it conditions could turn out into malnutrition so that's how we understand the two disorders which is koshyokar and marasmus some of the important topics of discussion the important disorders the diseases that we have talked about and the the colors with iodine in the case of starch glycogen and uh, cellulose are extremely important monosaccharides disaccharides and uh, polysaccharides and their respective names are again a very important from this section for example glucose is called as grape sugar fructose fruit sugar galactose brain sugar sucrose cane sugar lactose milk sugar maltose malt sugar so those are some of the very very important things that you must be familiar with in this lecture if you have any questions or queries feel free to drop those in the comment section thanks for joining in